Hello and welcome to your quarantine 2020 indefinite lockdown content headquarters, Drinks with Ron. I'm Ron, and well, I got a confession to make. The last episode I did, uh, the camera failed. I use a backup old camera for recording this show, uh, or old phone, rather, and it failed. So, after I made an episode, and then made a drink, then drank it, well, then I had to do a new episode with a new drink, and I had to drink it, and now I'm feeling warm and friendly, and I thought, let's keep the apocalypse content rolling, shall we? Ron, please provide me with some apocalypse content music. Some smooth jazz, if you would, as I finish off the root beer float. This one's been mixed. I did not use a straw like a caveman. I got my own reusable mixer. But I am hoarding straws for when they are worth more than gold after the apocalypse. But I've got really uh, no idea for an episode here. So I guess uh, we're going to play a game called One Time. Where I just say a thing that happened one time. Without context or backstory, I'm just going to tell you things that happened. Uh, one time, in Madison, uh, my buddy Hippie Brandon moved to town, and apparently his tradition when moving was to take a bunch of acid and then walk around your new neighborhood. That's how you familiarize yourself with your new surroundings. So Brandon did this, took a bunch of acid, walked around Madison, and on his way home, a car screeched up in front of him, stopped, the door flung open, and a guy popped out and projectile vomited all over a tree. And the door closed and the car drove away. That happened one time. Well, let's stay in Madison. Uh, one time in Madison, it was Halloween. And I had recently gotten into Wesley Willis. If you don't know, look him up. He's like a six foot six, three hundred fifty pound schizophrenic black dude from Chicago who plays the keyboard and would headbutt people at his shows uh, as a sign of affection. To the point where he had a giant patch here where everything was all roughed up from constant headbutts. But I digress. I got so hammered, I proceeded to walk up and down near State Street in Madison screaming Wesley Willis lyrics, uh, such as, I whipped Superman's ass. I think I, I, I think I walked around just yelling, I whipped Superman's ass. Oh, I sang the song a couple of times up and down the street. Just, I was from a small town. I moved to Madison. I was like, nobody gives a fuck here. I love that. I come from a place where everyone gives a fuck about everything, and they're all up in your business, even as a fucking kid. So when I got to Madison and it was like, woo, the shackles of oppression are thrown. So I got hammered and walked around screaming, I whipped Superman's ass. That happened one time. Oh, let's see. Let's just stick in Madison there. Um, what else happened that year? One time in Madison, at my buddy Blanchard's apartment, uh, watching wrestling it was in the height of WCW's NWO days and somehow it broke into a giant wrestling match on the floor in his house and next thing I knew I'm wrestling my buddy Blanchard on the living room floor that's a thing that happened one time uh, one time in Madison <laughs> I uh, I had hair <laughs> um, but you see what I did I came to Madison right out of high school went to trade school for radio TV broadcasting audio video editing blah 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 um, so I went from like I said the relative button down small town shenanigans to a place where nobody gave a shit. So I was able to wear a hat in school, which was cool for me, because I'd crawl out of bed, throw on a hat, 
stumbled to my car, still smelling very dank from the night before, and occasionally I would make it to school. And, and not having to do anything with my curly ass hair facilitated my attendance. So, uh, I also hated when your hair would get long and you'd grow, you had the hat and the hair would grow out and it would like feather up underneath. I, I hate that. It drives me nuts. So, I started shaving around the side so I could throw a hat on. Well, then the top grew <laughs> and it was, uh, very large. It was like six inches tall. I could shape it, twist it every which way. It was like, uh, it was crazy. But, <laughs> I I've been shaving the sides for quite a few months and not doing anything with the top. So it got that high and I always wore a hat in school, so nobody knew it. Uh, <laughs> one day I showed up early to write a paper that was due, you know, like in 20 minutes. So I'm typing away at the old school keyboard and you know, I spin the hat around, do some more, finally, you know, I'm stressing, finally take the hat off and there's my hair sticking all over as people start to arrive. <laughs> so I see one guy walk back and I can see him out of the corner of my eye, like looking and then backing away. And then pretty soon I see him come back with another dude and finally they're like, oh my God, that's Ron. <laughs> We didn't know you had hair! That's the thing that happened one time. One time, in Madison, uh, it was also Halloween. And I, I had heard tales of friends of mine who had gone up to Madison around State Street where dudes are just, you know, playing guitar for quarters or whatever. And they told me about a uh, feller who provided great local color in, in that very genre. And he had a handful of very goofy songs and they couldn't tell if he was either putting on a show or he was a very special sort of person. Either way, it was entertaining. They gave him some money. I heard the stories. Anyway, I'm at a party a uh, block off State Street at my friend's house. Uh, there's two chicks I hung out with all the time because, yeah, that's what 18-year-old Ron would do, is just always hang out with hot chicks. Good, it's a good thing to do. Just for you younger fellas, I, I, I recommend that. Anyway, I was at their party, a couple of my buddies from Lancaster came up, and as I'm standing in the back room, one of them comes in very excited and says, I've got something for you. Well, the something he had for me was this guy on the porch ready to serenade the hell out of us for this Halloween, uh, and, and of course, I knew a couple of his songs, so I walked out and said, hey, you know the elephant song? And he said, yeah, I know the elephant song, and I said, play me the elephant song, and he did. That happened one time. Lot of, a lot of things happen one time. It's just, it's remembering. This is kind of a high stress format. I, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't think it would be so much pressure to come up with things that happened one time. Well, that was a busy year. <laughs> a lot of things happened. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, you practice in school. One time, we were practicing in school, and, uh, you practice for network news. Hard network out. That's a radio term. That means you got a satellite feed coming from the main network. You're at a local board. You're going to talk and blah, blah, blah right up until the time when that national broadcast hits. And you're going to basically hit the buttons, feed it to the national, kick back and relax, knowing you hit your mark, you did your job, national news is in. Back timing it to the top of the hour. That's what it's called. Well, I was fucking good. So, one of my first goes, I do the thing, I play the song, I come out, time and temp, blah, 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 station ID at KROC. Top of the hour. Nothing. Now, here's the key. You're not supposed to have dead air. 
These things happen in broadcasting. You gotta be quick on your feet. You can't just sit there all fucking jaw agape like a slack-jawed hillbilly wondering why there's no sound coming out of the national office, the national broadcast center. So I tap danced and filled and said K-R-O-C, where we whip the donkey with rock. Whipping the donkey. Just whipping the donkey with rock here on K-R-O-C where we are whipping the donkey with rock. Finally, the news came in, in progress. What had happened was the guy in the national uh, news, Sean Schleep, um, forgot to hit the button. So his feed wasn't coming through. My, I'd done everything right, it was all set to go, but he was talking in the mic, he's hearing the mic in his headsets, he's seeing levels on his board, but the levels stop at the board, they don't come through to me. <laughs> so, my teacher comes in, who unbeknownst to me was apparently a hardcore PETA person, and she looks at me and says, Whipping the donkey? That's sleep! I don't, sleep was supposed to be there! I timed it noon, on the nose, it was perfect! It was, sleep would, whipping? the donkey with rock it's like metaphorically I'm not really whipping a donkey it's a uh, I I filled the time yeah because they had a closed circuiting speakers so they could sit in their office and switch to either studio and hear who was doing stuff which is a little pressure when you're shitty and trying to learn but uh yeah, one time I was in there with a uh, dude. One time I was in there, and uh, this dude I'm working with, uh, I went to school with, Jamie, is a good guy, and he decides, hey, look at that, I got this cut. I think he had it on a cart, man. Fucking queued up on a cart. Uh, this cut's from Space Pirates or something? Something about space herpes. I don't remember. He's like, should I do it? I'm like, yeah, go for it, dude. Because this, at this point, we're actually doing a programming. They've got a log. You play these things, commercials here. So we're doing the whole format. So he sandwiches in this space herpes thing. My teacher, also Jamie, comes and kicks the fucking door open. What the fuck is this? Space herpes bullshit on my airwaves? You're fired. Get out of here. And he's like, uh, 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 get out of my station. You're fired. Like you. Take over! <laughs> like, uh, okay. Uh, he's panicking. And she's like, hey, that's what's gonna happen to you. You pull this shit at a station, they're gonna come in, kick the door open, and fire your ass. Like, that's, that's a good lesson. That happened one time. Uh, let's see. Man, so many things happened. I got a, uh, one time, I had a cell phone. Which in 1997-98 was huge deal. I mean, that'd be like me showing up right now with some kind of weird x-ray technology that I could just, like, have. Like, where did you get that? Like, this is 2020. People don't just have. So, yeah, I was in the other studio. I had the lights and everything. So I kicked the lights off so I could see the board better. <laughs> My buddy next door also had a cell phone. It was just glass between the studios. So he fucking calls me. Phone starts ringing. So I had to be like the first guy to get interrupted on radio by a cell phone. You know, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And there's like a three second delay. So I'm like, seeing his mouth move while he's yelling at me. And it's like his angry hippie face. And I'm like, it's bright. Can't see. Why do you turn the lights off? Uh, that happened one time. So, drinks done, jazz is winding up, so for your 2020 apocalypse, uh, indefinite lockdown content headquarters, I'm Ron, signing off.